It, this election is going to be, it's not going to just be driven by foreign policy. It's national security, growing right. our economy, and frankly, defending our constitutional republic. Those three issues are going to drive this election cycle. And what's important here is that I'm the only candidate on the Republican side of the aisle that can keep this seat in the Republican Party. And the reason is we're outnumbered nearly two to one, Democrats and independents to Republicans in this state. So if we can't contract Patrick Murphy with anything other than another career politician, which we're all fed up with, I mean, you got to admit, it, you know, the fatigue of career politicians transcends party lines, as does those three issues. Um, so if we can't contrast Patrick Murphy, who will be the nominee, with anything other than another career politician, we're going to lose a seat. So, so you don't think Grace has a chance of beating I don't think so. Murphy. If you just look at the money he's raised and, and the ethics violations and the, the problems he has, that's, you know, um, my prediction, and I'm, you know, I'm rarely right when it comes to politics, but uh, I, I think Patrick Murphy is the, you know, is the presumptive nominee. Um, President Obama's gotten behind him, Biden's gotten behind him, so you know, he's the guy that we're shooting for. Uh, my point to everybody is I'm the guy that can keep the seat in the Republican Party. What's your take on all these polls? I mean, uh, Representative Jolly is always pushing that he is the front runner. Me and mind you that all these, these polls have him up barely in double digits and you guys are kind of middle of the pack. Sure. What do you think? What's your take on it? If undecided was running, he'd be winning. He'd be winning, yeah. That, that's the winner right now. That's what's significant. The rest, and, and a lot of these polls were all within the margin of error, so they're insignificant. They don't mean anything except that nobody has statewide name recognition and for an outsider at this time, and I'm truly the outsider. The entire rest of the pack, career politicians or political insiders. Um, so it's it's in my benefit right now that nobody has statewide name recognition. Now, now were you to win the Senate seat, you know, what committee hearings, what, what committee uh, assignments would you care for? One Again, I'm running on 27 years of real world experience right. in national security and the economy. So um, I've been up to the uh, to the Senate and, and met with some of the leadership, and I'm a shoe in for the sissy for the, the Select Intelligence Committee. Um, I think I'd be a good fit for the you're Armed Services. You're not a sissy, you're in for the. Yeah. Well, the select, <laughs> yeah, yeah, select Committee on Intelligence, um, the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence. So um, that, the Armed Services Committee, uh, Financial Services, uh, my understanding is each senator gets two primary and then a right. couple of alternates. So, and those are the ones I'd be most interested in, and that's where my, my talent lies, that's where my real world experience lies. I mean, if you look at the real world experience of national security, 16 years, um, split between um, you know, seven, eight years as an Army Green Beret, uh, been to combat twice, uh, a CIA officer in the Middle East, Arabic speaking CIA case officer in the Middle East on the war on terror. So that's real world boots on the ground experience that nobody else in this race has. And for the last 10 years, I've been growing not one, but three very successful medium-sized businesses. And we've created 600 jobs in the last 10 years. And that's real world experience over 27 years that nobody in this, in this race has right now. And that's what's going to appeal not just to the Republican Party for the primary, but to the independent swing voters. 2.9 non-party affiliated voters are for it. Big issue with Republicans, a lot of the Americans, are term limits. If you win the Senate seat, do you, are, do you, are you a proponent of term limits? And if so, I've already what are you declared at? that I would only serve 12 years. And I just put out a plan last week, I don't know if you saw it, make sure Aaron gets it to you, um, calling for a constitutional amendment for term limits. Uh, I'm not signing anybody's pledge. I don't need a third party to, to hold me to a pledge. My pledge is to the constituents, to the voters. Um, but I have pledged 12 years, and I also put out a plan, a five point plan last week, calling for 12 year limits in both the House and the Senate strip them of any pension benefits and ban them for life from ever being lobbyists. That in and of itself will end the notion of a career politician. Because at the end of the day, what we need is return to citizen government. But we need to return to a citizen government, which is what our founding fathers are. 